Morning folks, we've got the the brew day, I was going to say the vlog then for a minute. We've got the brew day in full swing this morning. You can hear obviously everything running. So what we're going to do this morning while that's happening is uh, put a first aid system, first aid box on the wall. So Jack's away this morning at uh, a college open day. So it's just me and the frigging dog. So a couple of quick little holes because this uh, Astroplast first aid box which is HSE compliant uh, is just going to sit on the wall where the fire blanket was. We don't really need a fire blanket in here but well I've got one so I may as well hang it on the wall right. We'll just change its position. So every day we're becoming a little bit more compliant with uh, rules and regs from the health and safety executive. A lot of people see it as red tape and I do to a certain extent but particularly when you've got somebody working with you, you know we've got Jack in here now and we have other people in and out particularly brewery tours which we've just started doing. You have to make sure that if anything goes wrong you've got all the correct procedures and everything else in place. So the spill kit, the first aid box, along with the chemical bunding that we bought the other day, which is uh, this plastic container here. This holds all the caustics. So if we have any leaks with any caustic, the leak will be contained within this bunded container itself. And then all the caustics are also separated from all the acids. So the acids have exactly the same thing over here their own separate bonding and that's something that I realized when we did a, a food safety qualification um, FSQ for SEBA food safety and quality I think was the mark the accreditation mark that we got and uh, I wasn't even aware that you shouldn't store caustics and acids together even though they're in pretty robust containers turns out that the containers you know, they can always get pierced by a sharp piece of metal or a screw on the floor or whatever. And if alkalis and acids mix, then it makes a bit of a mess. So we're slowly but surely knocking things on the head and making this a safe uh, and pleasant environment to work in. I mean, I like being in here anyway, but to other people it might be considered a job. Uh, so in that respect, we have to make sure that everything it's tick to boo. A um, couple more things that arrived yesterday while we were putting together the vacant recipe, <laughs> the vacant gesture um, recipe and method video. Uh, we got a car radiator. What we're going to use this for, you might add. These car radiators are 20 quid on eBay, just about. Couple of holes on the end to bung up. There's also one over here. We're going to use this for the cooling matrix for the cold room. So this car radiator will have this 
12 volt universal car radiator fan fitted to it. It'll just be stood off the fins like so to allow uh, air to blow directly through directly through the cooling fins on this bad boy and then what we're going to do is we're going to hang it up at the back of the cold room out the way of any pallets or casks and it's going to be wired up to some glycol uh, I don't know how we're going to do the glycol cooling yet but I imagine it's going to involve some type of remote beer chiller or I'll build one out of an AC unit or even an under counter bar fridge, bar chiller so we're going to pump glycol into one side, probably into the bottom, and then it'll come out of the top, having been through the radiator, and the fan will blow that cold into the room, and also the warm air over the radiator fins where it will be absorbed by the glycol and taken back to the chiller to be cooled again. So it's a pretty simple concept really. Uh, I've already got the control panel, uh, you know, out there on, on the internet. Yeah, so that's these uh, control units with an STC-1000 and all the switching relays inside to turn the glycol chiller on and off, as well as a heating element if it's required, but I don't think we're going to need one. I don't mind, as long as we're not below freezing, we should be fine in the cold room, as is. Uh, so yeah, we'll put a video together and we'll run across all of these things and I'll, I'll share the links to where all the other builds are so we can find everything and reference it. And if somebody else wants to build one of these or follow along with the build, you're going to have to wait for me to finish it, like, but you will be shown how I'm going to make this cold room completely. The alarm's going off. Let me just go and check on what that is and... Uh, well, we'll film something else. I've had a hop delivery this morning. That's exciting. Right. Told you I had some hops. So, I spent a heck of a lot of money, actually, um, getting these hops in. So, this has pretty much uh, emptied the brewery account. Uh, we spent... I think nearly £1,500 on hops for the beers coming up for the summer and uh, some of these hops are 2018 season, some of them aren't. Uh, the Simcoe for instance, we've got 2017 on that one, that had to come from Brewers Select, they didn't have any at Brookhouse Hops, but I highly recommend Brookhouse Hops because they're extremely competitive with their prices. And the very nice chap who works there uh, got in touch with me to say their vac packer is down and they normally ship in Centennial in 10 kilogram packs and they repackage into 5 kilos. So because he couldn't reseal the package, he sent me, we'll, we'll make sure he has, he said he sent me the extra 5 kilograms for free. So this is the second or third time I've used Brookhouse. I did use them through the hop.exchange website, which seems to have gone down, unfortunately. It was a nice little website that to do uh, your hop swaps on. Uh, there is one called Lupulin Exchange, and that seems to uh, be pretty good as well. Uh, Brookhouse lists some of their hops on that website, but I'm quite happy to go direct to the man at the top. So the first bag that we're gonna bring out. Oh, look at this, I can't wait to get this into a fucking beer. Oh, I'm so excited, I'm swearing. Amarillo 2018 crop. That is, well, that's a lot of money right there. Our Tom will like this one. Columbus 2018 crop. 15.5 Arthur. And then finally, oh, he's a man of his word. I only needed five, but I've got ten. Look at that. Ten kilograms of 2018 Centennial. That, my friend, is fantastic. So thank you very much, Brookhouse Hops. But that's only half, only half of what we've got. Oh, I get very excited about hoppage. 
I get very excited about hoppage. So these, I'm not going to open them up. These are two five kilogram boxes of Simcoe, 2017 Simcoe. We'll throw them down there. We don't need to open them up, we know what they are. These should be mosaic and citra. So this is the first time I'm going to have actually smelt any 2018 mosaic or citra. Everything I've been buying so far has been 16, 17 because Select, Bruce Select didn't have their crop in yet. Or they did actually, but it was really expensive for the 18s. 2018 Citra. Oh my god. 2018 Citra. More 2018 Amarillo. You know we're making a big beer. More 2018 Citra. And the money, baby. 2018 Mosaic. We're going to make some fantastic beers. We're not going to trip over ourselves. We've been too bitter on double New England IPAs. We're going to have some fun with these. So stay tuned. The next couple of weeks, we're going to be making some big beers. Not so big in the ABV, but really big in the hop department. Well, another brew day. Another batch of vacant in the tanks. Gone without a hitch. I'm just, actually it's not in the tanks. Getting excited. I'm just chilling, about to do the whirlpool stand and then transfer. It's only 10 to two. So I'm gonna have time to complete some of these cold room doors. Get the place looking a little tidier. Uh, we've got the grain already in the mash tun for tomorrow's brew day. Tomorrow is the ESB, it's the traditional bitter, the Harrison's bitter. It's not a very exciting beer because it's not meant to be. It's meant to be a substitute for all of the, well, I hate to use the word, fuddy duddies. For all of the older gentlemen who don't want flowery beer, don't want none of that easy stuff. They want crystal clear, boring, brown, beer coloured beer. So that's what the, uh, that's what that beer is. That's what it, um, has always been intended to be but we have to brew it and uh, we sell absolutely cask loads of it so why wouldn't you so yes I'm gonna to put together the doors for the cold room might get that done uh, before five o'clock and if I do then hey presto the whole place will look a lot tidier for tomorrow you can get a few you know bits and bobs off the desk for instance I made these handles, they look quite nifty don't they, so one sort of there and one there and then they can kind of, but it's down here, and just lift the uh, the doors off, eh? That looks a bit weird that doesn't it on camera. Anyway, I digress, I best go and check the temps and uh, get this beer into the fermenter. Right, we've started the transfer, said it's 30 minute hop steep, uh, so I'm just here with the hollow angle, 1985 and I'm cutting up the sections to go around the cold room doors so this when I cut it is just going to collapse straight on the floor because there's no there's no jack holding the other end oh wow we've got a clamp here boys let's use that instead See if that works indeed. Du, 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 du. <laughs> Just like that, he says. And then another one. Come on. There we go. So another one at 1985. These will be the two uprights for the side of the insulation. 1985. And then we'll have two 1200 long-ish pieces going across the top. And then we'll screw that 
to the plywood board which I've already cut. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly bass. Oh lovely jubbly. It's surprising how the last hour can tire you out. But uh, we got the doors done. Oh, it's a bit washed out, isn't it? But yes, there they are. So, unfortunately I couldn't get the same colour ply, but once we've got a spot of paint on there, it's not going to matter much. We've got beer in both tanks. A vacant smell amazing, by the way. We've got grain in the mash tun, we've got hot water for tomorrow's sanitation and we've got caustic recirculating in there. The HLT is full, I'm going to turn everything off, it's in. oh down here, down here, it's a little quieter. I'm going to set the HLT to come on in the morning, 80 degrees automatically with the recirculation on yeah and we are recirculating oh well that's it folks while well, I just fall down the drain there watch my foot in so I'm gonna actually grab all the chancy boy yeah here he is look start of the show oh boy been sat up there on that little bit of astro turf for the past half an hour you know what? I'm gonna go and sit in the beer garden and have a pint. What do you think, boy? Yes! So we'll check back for tomorrow's brew day, which is gonna be our English bitter, Harrison's bitter. We'll see you for that one. Cheers. <laughs>